Welcome to the Conservation Learning Center's 2021 Virtual Field Day. We are once again releasing a series of videos showcasing our demonstrations and research projects here at the CLC. Thank you to our sponsors, the Saskatchewan Wheat Development Commission and the Saskatchewan Flax Development Commission. And a big thank you to all of our funders who support research here at the CLC. The purpose of our Piola trial was to achieve an earlier Piola harvest with both Polish and early maturing Argentine canola varieties. This is a one-year Adopt Funder project. Ali Noble is here with us to speak about this trial. She is the Crops Extension Specialist at the Saskatchewan Ministry Agriculture Office in Prince Albert. Just behind us here, as you can see, we have 12 or 13 different treatments. So that's including some of the monocrops, uh, the intercrops, and then a couple just to use as checks. So the reason that this project got started is because we have started to get some intercropping um, interest with producers in the area and Piola is actually one of the most suitable uh, mixtures of crops to use as an intercrop in our area just because we do have a shorter growing season and it can have cool and wet harvests up here. So that's the point of this is we're hoping to look at some earlier maturing varieties that could potentially mean we can get that off a little earlier in the fall. So that means there's room for putting in winter cereals and hopefully avoiding the worst of the fall wet weather. This actually isn't the first time that the CLC has done intercropping um, on their research farm. Uh, so they tried it in 2018 and in 2019 and both of those years they actually ran into some issues with the crop maturing at different times. So the canola wouldn't be ripe enough and then the peas were already shattering out of their shells. So that's one of the reasons that they're trying to do this earlier maturing variety of Argentine canola that's available now. Along with that they use the Polish canola this year and that's because it actually it isn't used as much in um, Saskatchewan agriculture just because it doesn't yield quite as high as the Argentine canola does but it is ma matures a lot quicker than that and as well as that we do have flea beetle pressure in this area of the province and the hair on the Polish canola is actually a little longer and that means that you don't see as much pressure from flea beetles or as much feeding on it. The intercropping actually helps the peas stand up more. So if you see a monocropped pea crop, you're gonna see it likely lodge a bit, whereas the canola has a straighter stand and can actually keep those peas up, resulting in less disease overall. Um, as well as that, having an intercrop versus the monocrop. A monocrop of peas doesn't quite have that much stubble, and in dry conditions like we've seen this year, being able to get that stubble that can snow catch, so with that canola on the intercrop stubble, actually uh, helps to increase soil moisture in years after. They were seeded on May 31st and were first emerged on June 7th. Um, there was an application of glyphosate done pre-emergent, and then afterwards there was some post-ultra put on, and that was put on June 14th. Um, when they were seeded, they were seeded with the CLC's Fabro plot seeder and they were put an inch deep. So the canola and the peas were all put together in the same row when they were planted and they were used on double disc openers. As well as that, some inoculant was put down um, with the peas. There was no actual uh, fertilizer put down with the intercropping just to simulate the same issues that producers run into uh, with intercropping and the equipment uh, you have to use. There was fertilizer put down on the monocrop plots behind us and then in the different varieties that were actually seeded. So there was Polish canola and Synergy was used for that. The early maturing Argentine canola was 4.3 EO3. The P varieties were CDC Meadow and CDC Canary. And then we also had a regular Argentine canola, so PV760, and that was put in along with maple peas um, just to make sure that we have an accurate representation of what guys in the area have been using for intercropping so far. We'll be able to use it as a check to see if any of the early maturing varieties um, are actually able to get off a few weeks earlier than those. So we'll see how that all works out this year. Once uh, the research all comes in, they're gonna be checking. So they did soil tests in the area, they did plant counts. Um, we're also gonna be checking for lodging here, the date to maturity, and using those monocrop plots, we're gonna be checking the land equivalency ratio as well. Uh, so far, they didn't actually have to use any fungicide or any insecticide as the flea beetle pressure wasn't too bad this year. After looking at the canola and the pea intercropping, um, as with intercropping and the more interest we see with it, there's more questions that come out of it, including how it impacts disease. Um, as we know, canola does have some major diseases it's affected by in Saskatchewan, and two of those are blackleg and clubroot. 
So this year, SAS Canola and Sask Agriculture are actually partnering to offer some disease monitoring testing. So the first one is on-farm club root testing. So you, you can actually go to your local regional office and talk to your crop extension specialist, or you can contact SAS Canola directly and we'll get you soil testing bags. We'll tell you where to pull the test from, where to send it to, and we'll give you information afterwards on how you would receive the results. And then as well as that, there's also a black leg testing program. This is the first year that it's actually run in Saskatchewan. It will test um, using stem samples that you can send in. Uh, it will test for Leptospheria maculans, the aggressive species causing black leg. Um, and it'll test for the presence or absence of that. And if it is present, we'll be able to actually get to what race it is and be able to give you that information. So this is all, all of the information about this testing can be found if you just Google SAS Canola and go onto their website, or you can just to contact your local regional office and talk to your crop extension specialist and we'll have more information for you.